Well, hello there, Tom Green coming back at you with some Animate 3 goodness. And today's goodness involves managing audio in Animate 3. I am just loving the new audio features of Edge Animate. Having seen audio as a media feature that enriches the user experience, you can imagine my joy when audio appeared in Animate. In my last post here, I showed you how to add audio to an Animate composition. In this how-to, I dig into how you control it. It is dead simple to accomplish, but it also requires you to think a bit differently when it comes to audio management. In this exercise, the plan is rather simple. Click the play button, and the tone arm lands on the spinning record, and the audio starts to play. Click the stop button, and the tone arm lifts off the record, and the audio stops. Click the audio on off button, and the audio either plays or pauses. So let's get started. First off, you can't just heave any old audio track into Animate. It needs to be in both the MP3 and OGG formats, thanks to the various HTML5 browsers out there. I covered how this is accomplished in my earlier tutorial. If you have a Creative Cloud account, Audition reduces this task to a couple of mouse clicks. Audio is brought into Animate either through the Import menu, right here, or by clicking the plus sign in the audio panel in the library. When the audio comes in, the tracks are folded into an element, in this case Brubeck, meaning you don't need to add the individual files to the composition. Once I got that done, it was time to wire up the buttons. Now the first thing I needed to do was to stop the playhead right at the start of the whole composition. And, at, and to do this, I added a stop action by clicking insert trigger and the trigger I added was this one here, a stop, which is right there. Just click that and what this does is it just stops the playhead dead in its tracks and leaves the user the opportunity to click one of the buttons. To wire up the play button, I click the open actions button beside the play button element. I assigned a click event to the button and when the code panel opened I added a play action to the timeline, which frees the playhead from the stop action, so it just moves forward. And then what I did was use the new toggle mute audio snippet, and that's right down here, right there. This is more for insurance than anything else. I wanted to be sure the audio was not muted. Setting the value to false ensures in frame one that the audio is always turned on. I'm going to close that little bit of code and we'll look at the stop button next. Again, this is tied to a click event and it looks a little bit complicated, but it really isn't. When this button is clicked, the tone arm leaves the record and the record stops spinning. Also, the audio track is turned off. Well, not quite. When it comes to audio, it is either playing or it is paused. So the stop button basically pauses the audio and you can see that right here. That's the good news. The bad news is if you start the audio playing anywhere in the timeline, it will pick up where it left off. Thus, the third line of code right here, using the new play from snippet, make sure that I can set the value to zero to ensure the track starts right at the start of the audio track when it goes back to frame one. Think of this almost as rewind. And of course, I added a play reverse action right here, which goes to the down marker right there on the timeline. And what it does is it plays backwards. So it plays back towards the start marker. The audio on off button, this one right here, was the simplest of all to wire up. If I open the uh, code here, you can see it's pretty simple. And what it does is it uses the new toggle play pause snippet. And all I needed to do is add the name of the audio element, which in this case is Brubeck 3, and you can see there it is right there. So I've got the buttons wired up. How does it work? Well, let's take a look at it in the browser. So I'm just going to go over to Chrome, and let's see what happens. So there it is playing, and there's the stop. Notice that the tone arm came back and the record stopped. 
But I play it again. There's the audio off. That's the pause. And there's the play. So yeah, it does work. One final aspect of this project is the background. That's the brown with the circles. All it is is a background color applied to the stage and a series of circles that were drawn using the ellipse tool up here. The reason is size. Why add weight to the project bringing in SVG images when you can let animate write the HTML and CSS code that adds the color and draws the circles? Keep that one in mind when you're working in animate. So there you go, managing audio using the new audio snippets in Animate 3. Though this is a relatively simple overview, I hope you can see the rather large potential for adding and controlling audio in your Animate projects. It isn't hard. You simply need to keep in mind that audio is either playing or paused, and everything else that happens to the audio determines what happens when the audio is playing or paused. So knock yourself out and have some fun with this.